you um, an ID uh, and then some basic information about your address, an email address where we can send you information, a uh, phone number, and then uh, we'll take a, a picture of you to save if you don't have a passport picture to give us. And then uh, 20 CDs registration fee, which is about four or five dollars, and then you're good to go. But if you want to be a shareholder, you have to buy a share. A share is 100 Ghana CDs, which is twenty dollars. So once you uh, once you buy a share, you become an official member now. You become a shareholder. So at annual general meeting, you have a, you have a vote. You know the the, the structure of a credit union is not like um, other financial institutions. It's, it's each each shareholder one vote. So whether you have a hundred thousand shares, whether you have one share, you each have the same power, which is what actually encourages um, you know growth and equity. So we don't require too much from you, um, and it's just about savings. So we don't require so much uh, like the financial institutions require. So you save, then we loan you money, and you can if you don't want to be, take a loan, you just keep investing. So that if you open an account today and you want to come back to Ghana by next year, you have a nice sizable amount sitting in your account waiting for you to come if you want to buy land or whatever you want to use it for. Final question to that. Um, what is the structure, policies, and bylaws governing the, share, governing the credit union similar to those that you would find in the West, etc.? Or are they different? No, more or less the same. More or less the same. I mean, um, you find certain things that are peculiarly different, um, but more or less the same, you know, as far as credit union management anywhere in the world. It's just that our rates are more attractive. We have uh, rates of uh, 11% and 9% uh, per annum on investments, 3.5% um, on savings, and um, you know, we have a 19.5% um, you know, interest rate. If you, you you pay your interest on the receiving balance, so if you take 10,000 CDs from us, you pay 1,000 CDs one month. You don't pay interest on 10,000, you pay interest on 9,000 that you have left to pay us. We are also audited and regulated by the Credit Union Association of Ghana, so we've just done our fifth audit and we declared a first time dividend um, since we started of nine cities and 65 uh, pesos per share, which is a very, very good dividend if you know what dividends normally come in, 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 in any company, yet alone the financial industry. I have a, a question about um, just business in Ghana in general. I did hear, any, and maybe this was not necessarily designed for this, but could any of the panel members speak to uh, the most common or maybe most needed businesses in in the country. Maybe it's separated by region or not, but one of the one of the barriers that I find is that I could certainly save up money to come here, I could certainly build a home, but when it comes to having a steady stream of income unless I want to go back and forth six months at a time, three months at a time, which is not really my desire, uh, it makes it a little difficult to sort of figure out how to plan a life here. So if any of the panel members uh, could speak to them, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, I would recommend the food industry. I would recommend it because it's one of the uh, basic needs of our people, and this continent is growing. Uh, we expect um, over a billion, uh, maybe a billion and a half in the next few years. And we need to look at uh, trees like the avocados, as our brother Jensen said, the cashew. Cashews is a growing business. Uh, the organic vegetables or organic foods, fruits, trees. Even there's a sister from Cameroon that came to Ghana. She's growing apples, uh, stevia, the herbs. She's growing um, cherries. Uh, in greenhouses, uh, we are importing from Burkina Faso uh, millions of dollars worth of tomatoes because they got it together when they're growing tomatoes. We can grow the tomatoes here. Uh, we can uh, open up small health food stores uh, like Whole Foods in the U.S. We can do that collectively here. And with the 
35 billion dollars that we're importing from overseas for food, we can share that money among ourselves. So that's an everyday money maker. And that's the industry that I'm in, and I'm getting paid basically every day, and I can't keep up with the market. So please, look at the food industry. You cannot lose, because everybody got to eat. Just a quick addition to also what he said. The food industry and anything that has to do with value addition. So you have a lot of our commodities are in their raw form. And so taking it from its raw shea butter into a processed uh, form or bamba powder, like you said, moringa, cocoa powder, and adding value to it. So it's not just leaving our shores in a raw form, um, but it's being processed in some way. Okay, we take two more questions. Uh -huh. I have mine. Okay, go ahead. Um, one question, you say. Is the robo on Apple Apple apps now? Apple We're app. just about launching. That's, just, that's what I said. Immediately we'll launch out. Alex, Dawood, and he will talk to you. Okay, because there's even I have one. Obama, what is it? Uh, Bomani. Okay. And Dawood will tell Alex about. Bomani, so he will let you guys know. Okay. I'm just about launching. Um, but yeah. you're Dina? Don't worry about me. I'll see you next week. I got one money in my hand. Right. All I need to do is be ready to clear my name. <laughs> my third question. Um, we've been hearing about citizenship for a very long time. We've heard, we've heard about seven years to become a citizen, ten years to become a dual citizen in the U.S. What's really going on? Because we want to know, I think there's a group of us that are serious about coming. In fact, my 82 year old mother is texting me right now talking about, can I come? And I'm ready to be a citizen. Right. So, we, yeah, I'm, that's the, we just, we need some answers as far as this. Okay, first one, is you're, first one is you're already a citizen, okay? Just look at yourself in the mirror, then that's your citizenship. But, but on, a, on a higher level, and on a legal level, there, there have been challenges because of the Western mentality of our leaders. They have been, you know, taught and they have been dictated to by the Britniski Act that says deliberately, we are our goal, the American government goal is to separate the Africans in America from the Africans on the continent. Amen. So that's the policy of the American government and that we have to be, uh, we have to lobby to break that down. Okay, I remember when Honorable Minister Farrakhan came to Ghana, uh, he was actually told, the president at that time, former President Rollin, was told by the powers to be, do not let Farrakhan speak in Ghana. Okay, but he was not allowed to speak in certain places, but Mr. Rollin said that he broke away from that advice and allowed Farrakhan to speak. So in essence, um, we have been uh, under attack uh, by the West to keep us out of Africa. Because they know when we come here, we're going to see something, and we're going to hear something. So in essence, uh, we have been lobbying uh, for the last 20 to 30 years here in Africa. And we finally got a breakthrough uh, about three years ago in terms of just right out giving it to those that signed up for it or just asked for it. So they did have some programs in place, but it was not the correct ones, but it was a start. Because you know, 400 years of slavery is going to take us um, it's going to take, as Bob Marley say, total destruction of the West before we can get it, you know, cut blank. It's going to take total destruction, you know, as Bob Marley say. He said, it seems like total destruction is the only solution. So the Babylon got to fall before we can get it 100%. But right now, uh, we're, we're thankful that the doors are opening and then they're signing the paper. So the president said he's going to give it this year. And then from Ghana, we'll take off to the other countries. So just be a little patient. Uh, we'll get it. I've been here 32 years, and I'm just about to get it. But I'm already a citizen, okay? Thank you. One last question, my sister. Really a statement. Um, what statement is that? It's like a question. I don't have the microphone. Where's the microphone? And a lot of places around. Hold on, hold on. He wants to ask something. Um, technically, since 1992, yeah? All African countries have said that none of us gave our rights of citizenship up. Nobody asked us. 
and they all agreed that we had a right to return and claim citizenship in the countries that we return to. So all the African nations have signed up to that. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's make a great step. The president has signed, and 33 got it three years ago, and more again. So we submitted 250 applications, and it's been accepted. And we think with by August, maybe before the end of this year, we will get that back, and then we we'll sign up. You can sign up for it. So, so the process has already started. So the question that begs answer to that statement that that brother made yeah. is that there was a unanimous memorandum of understanding that diaspora can return back but was there any legislation put in place so that it will be in law and continue to that is is anyone who have repatriated to Ghana more than five years ago is there any rights that they born Ghanaian has that you don't have? Those are the questions that, that begs for answer. Well, again, you know, we have to ask legally, legally, because we understand what legality means and right. what rights are. And is there any opposition? Absolutely not at this time. Say? Absolutely not at this time. Yeah. What the yeah. government policy is, what the sister said earlier, Five years right of the seven years this, that, and then you're going to apply for citizenship and you can have the dual citizenship. What we're saying is that no, another door has been opened, okay? And that door has opened and we have, the process has been, been initiated and citizenship has been given through another way because legally it has not really worked the way it, it has and, and the memorandum of understanding is not legal. If you try to open a bank account right now, they're going to ask you where is your residence permit. Yes, exactly. Okay? If you don't have a residence permit, you're not going to open a bank account. So that's real. So in essence, what we're saying is that we can't just force them to sign citizenship over. They know we do this, but we just got to be patient because at the end of the day, they are what? Under the barrel of America's gun. Okay? They have to be real careful what they do. Just like the, um, Iran, you understand? They blast them into um, the Stone Ages. I mean, we got the John Wayne type stuff going on with these crackers. Right. So they are frightening our people not to give us citizenship. Okay. So they're telling them, if you give them citizenship, you know, this, we'll cut you off. Okay, we understand. Okay, so you got to be patient. At this point, no. Yes, no, no, it's not. So they're doing it through the back door. Right, they're doing it off the door. Yeah, they're doing it the back door. They're doing it the back door. Right, but you, you have to understand, Babylon still rules the world. The wickedness, okay? All right, there's a wicked devil, okay? So we got to deal with spirituality and know that we're going to get it, okay? And we just got to be a little patient because the work has been done, it's been prophesied. We're, gonna, we're talking about heaven on earth. Okay, and heaven on earth is what? The realization of the way life is supposed to be from the beginning. All right, and that's what? Our, and this is our home. I've been here 32 years and ain't about to leave. Okay. Ain't about to leave. And I, I go everywhere I want. Get ready to get on the plane on Monday, okay? I, get, I, go, I come and go as I get ready. So, one last question. Go ahead. I wanted to ask, yes, uh, yeah, Dr. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Um, Baba, I wanted to ask you, um, when you spoke earlier, you could be in the mindset of Dr. Sebi. I, I thought about that this evening when you started talking. But, um, and peace be upon uh, his soul. But I have a cousin who is struggling with lupus in the States. And so I was just wondering, is there any type of herbs that she could take or diet that she could adopt in order to get rid of the lupus or manage the lupus? Mm -hmm. In Africa, we don't manage the disease. We say uh, management of disease or even the web treatment was invented by Western medical science. We cure them. Um, I don't know my first website got a problem, but I've dealt with some cases of lupus and completely annihilated them in my visits to the States. 
uh, there are no incurable diseases. There are only incurable mindsets. So we'll talk about that. And healing is not a matter of medication. It's a matter of proper health process. And it involves a four square system. How you eat, how you think, how you exercise, all those comes into four within our natural holistic healing system. It can be done, it will be done. Take it that it is done. Thank you, Please, um, orthodox medicines that man manages um, our sicknesses, but herbal medicines kill. If someone says there is no cure for herbal, the person is totally lying. There is a herbal cure. Just doctors would not agree with me that the herbal will cure because the herbal is a root. So the root cause of that sickness. The herbal is going to heal you with it. And then orthodox, no matter how it is, it will be managing you and with the side effects. Herbal will give you side effects when you abuse it. So please, you can get a cure for it. Great. Thank you. Okay, last, one last question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I know it's been mentioned um, about telling uh, Westerners us about coming here and investing. Well, my question is, are we also doing that with the locals? Because the reason why I'm saying that is, like I said, I've been to different countries and I've met people from time, and they're obviously going to be reason. So if they knew and understood what they had, the value that was here, why are they going to wait? And are we advertising? Are we advertising? What's the Okay. Okay. Well, 16 years ago when we came here, I met a brother named Kwame. He was at the British Embassy trying to get a visa. Yeah. Um, when you all come to Dr. Town, I'm going to try and get Kwame to come and talk to you. Um, we convinced him that what he did is wasn't a visa, what he did was to change his mindset. Um, he listened, which people don't tend to. Um, now, he, as a brother that had come to the UK and had served in the army, he had a sister that was a nurse in England. Um, he's the youngest of them, right? Um, and he was looking to go over there to do something similar. He doesn't have a university degree, but he had some ideas. I said to him, watch here, I'll show you how you can. That young man now is, his brother and sister have now returned after their surgery in the West, and they envy him. He has made a living here, and he will tell you when you meet him that the decision not to go overseas, right, is the best decision he ever made. It is ignorance and propaganda. Yeah? There is a great deal of propaganda that tells our people that they're should go somewhere else. Even in the universities, they're being taught to go somewhere else, to look somewhere else, right? The opportunities are in. We can come and take up some of them. We can help our brothers and sisters to take advantage of what is here. Yeah? But we're going to have to help to break down the years of propaganda that they've had to live through on every TV and radio show and every magazine they come across from the public.
pulpit every week on Sunday. Yeah. The propaganda is in, at the extreme. Yeah, I, I've got a question. Um, like I said, um, if they don't see any value here, but then the question is, why are other countries coming here supposedly, uh, you know, to get value out of a land that supposedly is not here, yeah. that they're running away from? Uh, I think I think uh, I think we can continue that conversation after after this. But I have a question for Aruba. Two questions. What does Aruba mean first and foremost? And is Aruba an African company owned by Africans? Aruba was uh, Aruba is a river in Brazil. Brazil. Okay, and then it's owned by a Nigerian and Ghanaians, so it's an African company. He okay. used to uh, work in the Silicon Valley, so when he started the company, it was in, in Princeton, New Jersey. But right now. The uh, chairman, he bought, um, he lives in Ghana. He, he actually has a ranch in Ibri, so he's, he's very popular in Ghana. And the, the, the um, our comment, yeah, yeah, is have to be honest. Yeah. I didn't see any dark hands really on their hands. And, you know, why is what? the dark hands? You had the hands, see, because you had the hands and the white man hand was at the top, and I have issues with that okay. because we're in Africa and we're promoting something to African people, yeah? What's wrong with African ants? I, I, I'm, it's, it, it's not you, my queen, but it's something that I see, not just here, but I live in Britain, and I see um, African people setting up business, and they want to sell to African people, but they're u using European features to promote to Africans, and I, I just have a problem with that. You understand what I'm saying to you, my queen? Yeah, so I don't know if you can change the you know, you know the, the, the power power pain. The yeah, because the power pain look weak. With the media to fix. Yeah. This will be the last time we present it. Yeah, because we have to we have to promote Africa to Africa. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah.